All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Market Open. It is July 6th, 2023. It is uh, 9.20 a.m. And uh, there's a little bit of a red market. I woke up, didn't expect it to be this red. Thought we would carry on some of the momentum from yesterday. Looks like we're not. It's going to be a red day. So we're going to get into why it's red. And I guess we'll see in real time how red it gets. Now, it's not crazy red, but it is down. We do have some red. So that's why, you know, I have to break out the red shirt, of course. Had to... uh, celebrate commemorate the occasion might be actually a dip buying day to be honest so we'll see how bad it gets and then we'll go from there <laughs> great i bought yesterday right isn't 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 that the case that's why we can't time it pete what's up invisible voices philip rizzo adj Amit lives a lie in front of those bricks i don't know how many times i have to prove to you these guys these are real but you guys whatever broccoli bob guys er was right justin bryant kane frost surrey Fernando, Geis, Blake, Felicia, Paul, Gogan, potential UPS strike worries. Now, I, th- that is a concern, that UPS strike issue. Um, I don't know how much it's affecting the global economy. It's definitely a concern because UPS controls a decent amount. Well, I don't even know if it's a decent amount, but UPS does control a lot of... Um, uh, actually, no, I think it is a, a lot of, of package flow throughout the entire world. So yeah, that might be an issue. I don't know if that's enough to cause this much of a red day, but yeah, that is something going on. Style, what's up? Theo J, Seth Roth, Stevie Stone. All right, let's get into it. Why is it going to be a red day as the Aussie market generally falls as the US's lead? Well, I guess that's what we're here to figure out. Um, and that's what we're here to kind of discuss. I think there's a variety of different factors that I'm seeing that are going on that are contributing to a little bit more of the red. One of the reasons primarily is just, you know, when you got Facebook getting close to 300 bucks, you got Tesla at 2023 highs, the market tends to sell off. You don't tend to get that much momentum continuing, but um, you know, there could be a lot of other reasons. Let's get into this clip real quick. The private sector added 479,000 jobs in June and what implications that has for inflation. Then we'll get into the pre-market charts. Roy Dab, you say hi, Mitt from Australia. Hello to you. I love Australia. Uh, I love your guys' accents, and one day I will go to Australia and find my wife. That is my uh, that is my dream because I want my kids to have a an Australian accent. But that's that might be too much information. All right, let's get into this. Just a second away from the release of the ADP ADP report for June, Steve Leesman is here. Steve, what do you have? I got four hundred and ninety seven thousand. I got a double take number here that you have to look at and say, is this right? That's the number ADP providing for their estimate of the growth. Actually, it's no longer an estimate of the growth of the private of the BLS number. It's just their estimate. This is what they say happened in the month of June, uh, 497,000. That's against an estimate of 220 for the ADP number and against 240 for the payroll number. Good sector surging by 124. Services, what's the up, uh, what's the higher order than surge? 373. Hey, Steve, crazy. The, it's crazy. That's the is, other word. This is not as cl- held as close to the vest as the number tomorrow, is it? I mean, how many, when do people really know this number? I, I think when we report it. We just that the market was down about 100, and all of a sudden, bef- now it's uh, down 228. Well, it was oh, at eight o'clock. Me, yeah. It was at eight o'clock. It was. It was already already down because you think this number. You think the market all, I, was down all morning because of this? It got, went down more. It was down about 120, and at 8.05, it was down 240. And I was wondering what was going on. I don't know, Joe, but I don't know if this number was out. But let's take a look by business size. Uh, small business surging up 299, medium up 183. Large business down 8,000. That's the second month in a row. But then look at how it happened. Leisure Hospitality up by 232. Construction, 97,000. A lot of talk about that housing market b- bottoming. Uh, trade transport utilities up by 90 information down. So one of the reasons the market could be bearish on all these jobs. I mean, so think about this, right? We estimated 220,000 jobs. We got 497,000. This might not be the best for calming inflation. I mean, you want to see the unemployment rate go up to combat inflation from a macro perspective. This is a major beat, bro. This is more than double the amount of jobs we thought we would add. I mean, that's a lot of jobs. That's that that's a hell of a reason for why the market could sell off because basically that could instill the implications that we're going to continue to have inflation, which means we're going to have more rate hikes, which means there's no chance of 
a continued pause. I mean, that could be the perception of the market right now. 30 as you see the yields for the 10 years and two years are up as well. Wow, the two years at 5%. Manufacturing uh, down, I guess that's down 42,000. That's information. Uh, information technology. Yeah, me too. Okay. Uh, now, uh, looking at wages up 6.4%. Uh, that's down from 6.6 in May. Job changers uh, up 11.2%. That's down for the 12th straight month. Slowest pace of growth is October 2021. So a lot of people hired, but wages continue to come down. Uh, now, uh, guys, real quick, you may be asking yourselves, who's better, the um, ADP or the Wall Street consensus? And I have a chart to show you which um, I, I'll show you In the terms chart. Of matching up with the jobs number for the government from the government. This okay. So this is the matching up ADP with the government's private sector number, and matching up the Wall Street consensus with the overall number. And you can see the Wall Street consensus has been light. We talked about this yesterday. The average is 110,000 over the a year to date. You can see that ADP has been a lot closer. Their average miss has been about 30,000. Wall Street's average miss has been about 80,000 just over this period that we're looking at on the three-month average. All right. So, I mean, that is your answer. That's definitely your answer. This is Josh says, uh, yeah, 50 basis points not happening. 25 basis points not even happening. Yeah, man, that's ah, that's the answer. There's So, for the 264 people that are here, thank you for being here. If you're wondering why the markets are red, we have an answer. I mean, it takes two seconds to realize why the market's tanked on this news. We added almost half a million jobs in a month where the Fed is trying to get us to lose more than that, right? It, to get unemployment. To, because, I mean, again, the macro argument is you got to get unemployment to go down for inflation to go down, which means, unfortunately, people have to lose their jobs. It kind of sucks saying that, but I guess that's just the way, you know, the macro works. If we're going to add jobs. Now, granted, this this goes into the to the bull thesis of a soft landing. It's like, well, you know, maybe there is some something like a soft landing that uh, is possible. It's just like in a soft landing, you, you can't do a lot of these crazy things. Like you can't you can't have these many jobs. You can't give out this much student loan forgiveness. Like there's all this stuff you can't do in order to guarantee that things are soft when we land. So I, it, it, but it's conflicting, though, because that means the economy is strong, right? Like if we're adding that many jobs, that means like. People have more money. That means Q2 earnings might not be that bad, but as as uh, on the balance, that might mean that inflation doesn't go down. This is the this is the you know to give credit to Jay Powell. This is the hard stuff he has to deal with because he's trying to factor in like all the different variables and come to a decision. As you can see, Arc is down one percent in the pre market. Microsoft's down. The Qs are down. Palantir is down two percent, fifteen dollars thirty eight cents. Tesla at two seventy eight down 1.45% SLG. This will hit $31 yesterday. Now it's down 1.42%. NVIDIA, 418. S&P is, four, wow, is 439. It's the first time I see it under 440 in a couple of days. Ah, S&P is down. Where's SoFi? Oh, man, SoFi should be, oh, SoFi is 822. Uh, Enphase is doing an announcement with the United States. They're investing $60 million in some plant. So, uh, it's really a nothing burger, to be honest. It's it's just like whatever, but they get the guy is going to be with Joe Biden. I don't know if that's going to pump the stock at all. Uh, given that it's a red day, I don't know. It probably won't pump as much, um, but that is happening. Where's Robinhood? Uh, Robinhood is at 1057. You go on my Twitter. I saw a, a, a Facebook ad for Robinhood for the first time in like a year. Uh, that's a very good sign to me. That means they are getting ready to ramp up advertising. And when they get ready to ramp up advertising, they're like, all right, this is the bull market. Let's get these damn users. They're, I, I, they've had 4.65% for like almost a year. And I this is the first time on Facebook I saw a Robinhood commercial with 4.65%. I was like, wow, they're actually spending money to acquire customers now. And um, that should be good for user growth. All right, let's see how bad this market gets. We got 10 seconds. Here we go. Let's see how bad of a red day. Oh, sorry. The camera died in a weird way. You should, his camera's just down. You guys should be able to see me now. Thank goodness you guys heard me for all that time. Uh, okay, I don't know why my camera's red, but let's just go with the red. Oh, wow. The camera's red because the market is red. That's what we're dealing with right now. That's crazy. All right. The stock market's open, ladies and gentlemen.
Pounds here at fifteen dollars thirty-five cents, down two point two zero percent. The Q's at three sixty-six. Microsoft three thirty-seven. PayPal at sixty-seven dollars. Meta, for some reason, is up at two hundred ninety-six dollars, which is just absolutely insane. And you know what? It's at two ninety-seven. The reason it's up is because they released a Twitter competitor last night. I have some thoughts on it that we'll get into. I want to know your guys' thoughts if you checked it out as well. Um, and so we'll talk about that, but that's probably why it's up. Uh, they got 7 million signups in about 10 hours, so it's not bad for Meta. Uh, Snowflake at 100. Wow, Snowflake at 169. All right, so Snowflake's down. Arc Innovation 43, SLG at 29, 28, TTCF. I don't know why it's still trading, but 26 cents. We got Tesla, 278. We've got Robin at $10.61. Bitcoin, 30,603. S&P at 439. Um, Microsoft, 337. Pounder, 1533. Coinbase at $78, not bad. GM at $38. Snapchat, this one's been hovering above $12. Got to $12.35 the other day. Snapchat's now $12.30. Here's a, a, a Bitcoin play on a company I'm thinking of a little more, CleanSpark. So CleanSpark, I actually interviewed the executive chairman of this company. They're a Bitcoin energy miner. They're up like 100 something percent in the past couple of months. This is one that I missed and I shouldn't have missed because even though I don't like crypto that much and I, you know, I'm uh, it's hard for me to like hold Bitcoin, I should have known to get this guy in like January, February when Bitcoin was theoretically at its lows because this guy is kind of similar to Coinbase in that it flows with, with Bitcoin. And I, I met the company. It's a legitimate company. These guys actually sold a lot of their Bitcoin at 61000 so they made a ton of money at the top and they started buying back in at the bottom. Uh, basically, they're a Bitcoin miner. They're a public Bitcoin mining company. I actually know the company decently well. I was invited to actually go to their facilities, but I never got a chance to go. And uh, this one's up. Now, if Bitcoin goes up, there are proxy plays that if you don't want to invest in Bitcoin, you can invest in other companies to get some momentum. And CleanSpark is one of those to think about. Again, I haven't gone through their numbers. I haven't done a lot more due diligence. I just remember that they are a proxy to Bitcoin and no wonder they're up so much given what's happened with Bitcoin. Let's go to their six month chart. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Their lows were at $2.61. Now they're at $5.53. So this is one to remember. I'll, I'll let you guys know if I actually initiate a position, but I'm still doing due diligence. It's one to think about. Uh, NASDAQ, what, Roblox is at $40. Amazon, 128 NASDAQ, 13655 Not bad. So NASDAQ, not that much of a decline. I mean, it's down, but it's not uh, that bad. Consider Ma uh, Ma uh, MSTR. What is it? MicroStrategy. Yeah, MicroStrategy is also another good play. I mean, if you're corresponding. MicroStrategy, it's just the valuations of not a little... The thing about clean energy is that it was a really, it's a really small company, right? So the pop, I think you can expect a little bit more, but 100%. I mean, MicroStrategy flows in the combination of Bitcoin. Um, and MicroStrategy also has another business that they do as well. Um, open door at $3.85. Truist at $30.50. Short QQQs at 1941. So if you are having some short QQQ shares, you are up today. On the investment, Meta finally comes down. So no one has been able to escape the wrath of Mr. Market on this very, very red day. Look at Palantir. Wow, Palantir tanked. 15 Dolores on Palantir. That was a tank of epic proportions. This is a buying day for me. There are some, there are some stocks I definitely wanted to load up on a little bit more. Um... Yeah, Palantir is down. You know what's so interesting? This is the thing that makes me so nervous with Palantir. It's like, I I, I, I I, think the valuation is a little bit stretched given the growth rate, but I do think the valuation will be justified. But any hint of the market thinks the valuation is not justified, I feel like they just tank it. And that's the really scary part to me about Palantir. Now, granted, AI and the momentum should keep up, yes. But we're not like NVIDIA. We don't have like the hottest H100 computers in the world and everyone needs to buy it from us. We are at the end of the day at the mercy of the market feeling that our narrative is going to play out. And that's why I feel so nervous around the valuation sometimes because on the red days, it could really tank. But then the flip side to that is you have enough people that are willing to buy the dip that um, ends up being okay. This is kind of crazy, this infrared stuff. I have no idea why this is happening right now, guys. Uh, usually this happens when I open up another uh, like thing on the computer and like there's two computer there's two webcams open at once and then it does this weird effect i'm going to turn it off and on real quick and then we'll we'll see if it changes so let's switch it to this then we'll switch it to this i'm going to turn the camera off real quick turn it on again and we'll see if it fixes if not then i'm going to be infrared for today oh there we go we fixed it that's kind of cool though though right the infrared that's kind of cool um okay so 
Yes. If you're new here, uh, the jobs report came out. The reason we have this red is because we made double the jobs than we lost. And as a result of that, the market decided to say that inflation is not going down. And if inflation is not going down because we have all these jobs, then we're likely going to get two rate hikes, if not at least one rate hike for sure. And it's going to be a little bit harder for us to keep doing what we need to be able to do. And that's the news that we got right now. What are you buying today, Amit? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's go to the good old hood and let's take a look. Um, all right. So Robin is at 1054, Pounder is at 1490. If we can get Pounder even lower, I, I got Pounder at the 13s when it got there. So that would be something I'd be interested in buying. Some so far is at eight dollars and three cents. Eight dollars. Wow. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. Oh my, that is a precipitous drop. That is that is that pounders down 5.2%. Red day. Red, 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 red day. Yeah, I mean, I would be interested in buying some sofa and some pounder. I also I want to see some options. I want to get a little bit more on sofa. So if today's red, today might be a good day to buy more. By the way, folks, we have the um earnings date, July 31st, 8 a.m. We'll be live on this channel. And uh, I am pretty excited for the quarter. I think SoFi will be fine in pretty much all areas. Galileo growth is what I don't think is going to do well. Uh, just because, well, and, and it could do well given on some some comments Anthony Noto said, but I, I don't see the trend reversing this quarter. So Galileo is the only one concerned I'm concerned about. Everything else, I think the market should be fine. But we'll see where else it goes from there. Going to buy some 2025 calls on SoFi. Yeah, I, I, people were thinking of short-term calls after earnings. And although it's enticing, I just, if Galileo shits the bed, then the the market's not going to respect it and so at least 2025 you get a year and a half to to do some stuff best time to buy is probably tomorrow this news will take time to adjust that's fair that's fair but i wasn't going to buy a lot anyway just but a lot of stocks are red so this is the day or maybe the week to start hunting a little bit more um bad idea to touch options i will be super bad. that's actually a good idea as well i'm looking at some of the options i already have positions in and how far they've come down and basically seeing, do I want to average up? Because I already have such low prices in some of these options. I'm like, do I want to average up on some of these? My hood calls are still up. I don't know. Robin, it's so interesting, bro. At least these options are interesting. Robin, it's down and the options are up. It's like, it's very interesting how these things work. Um, Yeah, so this is, this is absolutely uh, a market. Worth a poll. Is it a red off day or a start on multiple red days? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that poll and then we'll take a look at another clip. Do you guys think today is a red day or just the start of many red days? Let's see. Now, Chris thinks it's going to be um, some more red to come. He thinks there's something going on in housing that is particularly not the best. And as a result of that, we're seeing a little bit more of a red momentum. Question is if that's going to last long term and or at least all throughout q2 let's take a look at this but a very hawkish fed the majority of members actually favoring two more hikes cuts all but off the table how does that shape your view of the markets going forward in the second half and also the possibility of a recession so it's actually very similar to to what we've been thinking and i think you have seen the market expectations certainly move to this more hawkish um, outlook for the fed with continued hikes um, and as Julian had said, this is a higher for longer outlook that we're now starting to get from the Fed. For the market, that's a really important narrative. So we've had a wonderful first half of the year where the risk assets have done extremely well. Uh, you've had high hopes for maybe a soft landing and also hopes for a, a soon coming end to Fed tightening. But as we are now becoming more aware, more familiar with the idea that the Fed is likely to continue hiking, that's unfortunately going to hit market sentiment through the second half of the year. And the further that the Fed hikes, of course, it greater the chance of an economic slowdown. So unfortunately, and again, that job report did not help in terms of calming nerves that the Fed wouldn't hike today. See, okay. that is likely to weigh on risk assets this year. All right. So Fed minutes do give us some insight, but in all fairness, it's backwards looking. But now we're looking ahead. The Fed said it's data dependent. Tomorrow, we have the monthly jobs report, really the big one. One of the things they've been watching is wage growth. And while the jobs numbers themselves have been kind of up and down and had some surprises, Wage growth's actually gone down fairly steady. So I want to ask you, wage growth, total jobs, is there any metric in this report that could possibly change the Fed's mind about a hike, at least in the next meeting? 
It's quite unlikely. I mean, within the minutes, they did specifically mention the jobs report, the fact that payrolls have been very, very strong. If you were to see a significant damage surprise, so a really major fall in payrolls, uh, then maybe that's enough to, to change the Fed's mind. You'd probably need to see inflation data mm. also softening in order to, to push in that in direction. But certainly, we're not expecting the jobs data tomorrow to show considerable weakness. Uh, we're expecting that to come through as you get close to the fourth quarter. But for tomorrow, that's not going to be enough. And as you said, the wage growth numbers have been slowing, but not slowing enough. So they need to see further evidence of that. And really, overall, putting together the um, the jobless claims data today, the jolts numbers out today, okay. as well as the jobless. Now, this is a good point by Matt. I mean, whatever she's talking about in the context of job report, she's also, I mean, she's mentioning inflation, but we've got to give them some credit right here. Oh, man, I was supposed to press keep sharing. Uh, it, Matt says inflation is already under control. Even if jobs are hot, the Fed would be wrong to hike again. I think he's right on that. If you look at true inflation and there was a poll or a study done yesterday about how accurate to, true inflation is with like actual core inflation. And it's like 0.97%. It's like 0.97 in terms of a scale of zero to one. It's it's pretty accurate. D true inflation says inflation is at 2.33%. Like we've busted inflation. A year to date low was 2.29. Year to date high was 6.31. The Fed says that's 4%. If inflation is coming down, I mean, just look at oil prices. Let's let's look at oil right now. Oil, Brent, Brent, Brent oil. I always thought Brent is a rich white kid from Los Angeles. Oh, Brent, well, oil is up a little bit. It's at 75. It was at 67 on, on Monday or 67 last Friday. So Brent is now at 75 bucks. Okay, so that, that's going up a little bit. But granted, it's still, it's not as bad as it was before. Uh, if oil is coming down, then we should... Theoretically, also in the energy sector, we should also have a better chance of cracking inflation. Now, granted, the jobs that we're getting doesn't help for that situation, but I don't know if it's enough to be in such a negative catalyst. You know, like student loans, we would have printed about $360 billion out of thin air and inflate the economy to forgive student loans. The, the, the counter argument to that is that students would have more money to spend in the economy because their student loans would be gone, right? So you can go both ways. But I don't know if these jobs are that type of a catalyst. Um, have you been to the grocery store lately? That's how I check it. Well, so the argument around the grocery store thing, which which I think prices are still massively inflated in the grocery store, is that once grocers or like companies inflate their prices, it's hard for them to reduce it. Uh, that's like, at least that's what I was listening to. It's like, they're, they're going to keep those prices high because they're greedy and all this stuff, even if their margins get better, because, because you know, people are willing to accept it, right? Like if you're paying six bucks for milk now. You're like, all right, I have to pay six bucks of milk. So even if the cost goes down, the grocer's like, well, if no one else is changing it, I'll keep it at six bucks and I'll just take the extra money. Maybe that thesis is not completely correct, but uh, that might explain a little bit for why prices haven't come down too much at the um, at the grocery store. People will refi with SoFi. Yep, that is also correct. So, I mean, look, the all these jobs may not be the best for inflation, but I don't think it's the worst thing. I don't think it's, I don't know if it's enough for j to be super aggressive. However, it is enough for uh, the economy, Mr. Market, to give us an absolutely monster of a red day. I mean, this is the question is how fast we'll recover now. Look, Pouncers at 1491. Do we finish to $15 by the end of the day? Do we get back there? Right? Meta at 294. Meta doesn't go down too much. Snowflake at 168. This one was obvious. I mean, the founder sold $90 million worth of stock. Bro, if, if Alex Carp sells $90 million worth of stock tomorrow, you, you pound is probably going to go down <laughs> like and it's not because of the 90 million it's because everyone's looking at him like why are you cashing out on 90 million bucks bro like it's a lot tesla down at 276 robin is now at 1045 uh nvidia at 416 sofi at eight bucks sofi not going down to the sevens yet it's hanging on by a little bit of a thread yeah, today's a green day. Today you got to stomach that green. You got to deal with it. There you go. So if I now below $8, got to stomach the green for today and deal with it. Apple, look at that. Apple's no longer a $3 trillion company. 2.99T. Apple is down as well. When Apple's down, the market's down. Google at 120. All right, here's the big question. Do you buy Google before earnings or not? Because the market has basically disrespected the crap out of Google. They said that they've not given Google the premium I think Google should be getting for the type of company it is. But on the other hand, maybe they think Google is a dying tech company that can't really create any innovation and searches in a bad spot. ChatGPT web traffic was down 38% month over month as per yesterday's numbers, but it's still got 1.5 billion visits uh, and it's only going to grow you know, over time. 
it's an interesting question because Google might pop on earnings because they just like really blow it out of the water, but they also might signal they're a declining company. And so I don't know. Google's a scary one to touch, but it is something to look into before earnings. Celsius energy drink at $148. Not bad. Um, Spotify 157. Mullen. Mullen's up 77% today. Okay. Congrats to the Mullen shareholders. You're up 77%. Uh, oh, I said stomach the green. Sorry, I meant to say red. I meant to say red. I meant to say red. Amit, do you think you're a good investor? Absolutely not. I do not think I'm a good investor. Um, my bad, guys. I meant to say seven. Amazon is a much better buy than Google. I agree. Amazon's a much better. I think Amazon will take some more. I'm just thinking about Google of just like, is there going to be a short-term pop? But I, I agree. Amazon definitely long-term versus Google, in my opinion. Remember, Amazon's not a search engine. Amazon's a search engine for products. And that's a totally different business. AWS is absolutely killing it. Destroyed Azure and GCP over the past couple of years. So there's a lot of room to be bullish on Amazon. Wow, Mullen's up 73%. This is that weird automotive company that like tanked and now it, it's like an EV stock or whatever. You can see the chart right here. It's uh, not the best chart. It was at $30,000 a share at one point. So in 2012, you could have bought this for $30,000 and now you could have it for 29 cents. That's what happens when you have a lot of reverse splits. All right. Palantir at 1489. And again, Meta holding up at 296. All right. So has anyone tried the Meta Threads product? Has anyone tried it? I tried it last night. I thought it was interesting. Uh, Zuck says they have you know millions of users in a, in a couple of hours. I think the overarching problem is that with a text-based product, uh, there's not a lot of people that want to communicate in text, which is why Twitter, like 3% of the users create all the content. Because you have to be chatty. You have to be like, have all these thoughts in your head to put them out there. Uh, the content is usually pretty shallow unless you really give it some thought and, and effort. And uh, it, there's a unique way to grow on a text-based app. I think if Meta is trying to get a billion people to just type out thoughts all day and basically do microblogging, it's not the easiest task. Second of all, um, I, I don't want my Instagram friends to follow me, bro. Like, I don't, like, to be honest, I don't like any of them anymore. Like, they're all kind of, they're from high school and college. Does anyone relate to that? It's like, I like Twitter, you know, random people like Zoe Cold, Tess, Blake Anderson, Josh, all you guys on Twitter. Like, I like seeing you guys on Twitter, even though I haven't met you in person, because you're like, your Twitter friends. I don't want to mix Instagram friends with that, bro. Stay on Instagram. Like, let me do my thing on Twitter. So the idea that they're trying to create these clusters of, of social groups, I think is the downfall of this product. And I, I saw some tweets about this yesterday, kind of going in depth on this. I don't like that. I mean, like, you can't be an authentic kind of brand or personality when you have your friends kind of watching everything you say, or it's just like annoying to see that. Uh, it's just human psychology. No one wants to see that. And so I really don't want my friends to follow me. And I, if I can't grow outside of my social graph that uh, meta has constructed for me then i don't really know what's the value of doing it yeah it seems like you guys agree yeah it's just annoying bro it's like like i don't care what jessica from fucking freshman year who still follows me on instagram thinks about my thoughts on investing also these guys don't even invest like i post on twitter because i know there's people that care about investing there's a community there and like twitter as like fintwit is a really deep population so like i like posting there for, for that content on Meta, like this is why I don't post stories anymore on my Instagram because I'm like, who am I posting this story for? Does anyone relate with me? Who are you posting the story for? Literally, you're like, you're posting the story, and then there's this weird dopamine rush of you checking to see who viewed the story. And I feel like a monkey every time I do it. Like, oh my God, who, like when people like my tweet, I, I'm not like staring at the likes on Twitter, right? Because relatively, they're strangers, they're your followers. They're, like, you don't need to, like, oh my God, who's liking my tweet? It's just like, all right, people liked it to show that they, they, they engage with the content. They care about the content on Instagram with stories. You're like obsessed, like every five seconds, who's actually watching my story. And it's like, and then you, Facebook created this weird dopamine effect where like, if you're, you're interpreting how other people are, are interacting with your story based on you seeing them like it. It's like, Oh, what does John think of my story now that he liked it? What does Mary think of my story now that she liked it? And you're just in this echo chamber. And I'm just like, what's the point of even posting the story? If it can't go out to like the masses and that's not how Instagram stories work, it's like basically with your friends, it just sucks. And so I kind of stopped worrying about stories and, and focus more on Twitter. So I don't, I don't really know if Instagram threads is going to be that social cluster that, that I want to go back to engage with. It's kind of annoying. This is the only reason I'm eh about threads because my friends are on it. Yeah. It's like, that's not the, the best idea. Can't you create a separate account? 
Yeah, you can. I mean, I'm just saying in, in terms of from a macro perspective, Facebook trying to get all these users on and they're like, hey, log in with your Instagram, follow your Instagram friends. I'm like, really? I don't, I don't want to follow my Instagram friends. <laughs> that's, the, that's not, and they, they made it a super smooth login. It took me like less than two seconds to log in. It was really smooth. I'll give them props on that. But still, I'm not the best. 39, I still love my high school boys. Me too. I have two high school boys that I love, Adagoke and David. Those are my guys. But the other 1,200 people on Instagram, that like, I don't care about them, right? And so I, I think I'll be friends in my 40s with some of my friends from high school. I just I don't want them to follow me on threads. <laughs> Amit, do you have friends? Yes, I have some friends. Um, you can't make an account if you don't have an IG? I actually don't know. I don't know that. I'm not sure. Not sure. That's on you. Be yourself. If others you used to know doesn't want to hear it, they unfollow you. Yeah, it's it's not more about that. I'm thinking from a massive like 1 billion user perspective, how does consumer behavior operate? And the reason why Instagram was cool over Facebook is because people felt their parents weren't on it, right? And and, and you're like, your parents can't unfriend you, right? Or you're, you could block your parents or whatever. There's ways to get around it. But you left Instagram, or Facebook to go to Instagram because that was cool. The reason so many people joined TikTok is because they felt Instagram got boring. So to me, if I'm thinking about threads, I'm like, are, an, are a billion people going to start posting random thoughts that they have from an intellectual perspective? Because you got to kind of be intellectual to be chatty and all that stuff. Um, not in a pretentious way, but you have to have like thoughts, stuff to say every day, right? To put out into the world. Otherwise, the thoughts just become not that interesting um, to, to, to their friends. And are their friends going to care about it? It's easier to post a selfie or a story update, but to actually have things to say or right? to use words to build an audience and attention. To me, if it's not being broadcasted to the masses and you have a chance to build an audience, it's just staying within your friend group. That's just not as interesting to me. And I don't know if a billion people are going to like that either. So, all right, let's take a look back at the charts. Uh, obviously, whatever I'm saying is just my personal perspective because I think the market likes it. Uh, Meta now 293. Look, I think the market's argument is, okay, Facebook has ads on Instagram and Facebook and eventually WhatsApp. If this Twitter threads thing uh, product becomes a billion users, they're going to have a crap ton of ads. And here's the thing. The question becomes, are the ads additive to Facebook and Instagram or do they take away time from Facebook and Instagram? Meaning you basically got to get other people's attention from other platforms, mainly Twitter, right? That's the market they're going after. So if I spend 10 minutes on Twitter a day, can I take those 10 minutes and spend it on meta and then scroll through meta ads on threads? That's good for Facebook shareholders. The problem is if you leave Instagram to scroll on threads and you're not looking at ads on Instagram, that's actually not good because threads doesn't have ads and it won't have ads for a long time. And so when they do the ads on threads, the question is how good is the targeting on those ads compared to Instagram? Because obviously Instagram ads are phenomenal uh, just in terms of their targeting. So it, the question is, the only way this works in the long term is if you have new users adding time to the overall family of apps that are different than the um, than, than the minutes they're spending elsewhere. Because if they're taking away minutes from Facebook and Instagram, it's actually probably not the best for threads, unless threads is growing a lot. And then you know it's a loss leader in the short term. Ginkgo Bioworks down at $1.07, Coinbase 76, Snapchat 1202, Pouncher 1478, Pouncher down almost 6% on the day, SLG down to $29 and where is SoFi? SoFi 791. Q's at 365, Tesla 274, Robinhood at 1042. Robinhood actually holding up decently, but Robinhood is down as well. Nvidia 415, S&P at 438. It's a legitimate red day. We have not had a red day in a long time. It is a legitimate red day. Threads won't work because it's the opposite of Insta. Insta, you try to create this persona that you're as cool as possible. Threads, Twitter is giving you real raw thoughts. I agree. 100%, Matt. I agree. And so th that's also a little bit hard. Like if people try to act like like cool on threads or whatever, the same way they do on Instagram, uh, it's going to be hard for that platform to win. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. <laughs> I met all of my high school friends in, pr in prison. <laughs> Interesting. I never thought about Twitter like that. And Amit is right. I have zero friends from high school on Twitter. I can't say the same for Facebook and Instagram. It's mostly high school friends. Yeah, look, if some of my Instagram friends follow me on tw on on Twitter, I don't care. But it's just like it's kind of like, why are you like, why are you sitting with me? Like, can you go away? Like, I'm like, I'm I'm trying to like tweet about Palantir. You don't even know about you don't. None of you guys even care about stocks. You guys care about going to Coachella because you think you look cool on your Instagram story. Like, that's the types of friends I have from Instagram from high school. And I'm, I'm sure more most of you guys relate. It's like. Uh, I'm trying to actually like do something with my life. You're just trying to fucking go party all day. Like it's, it's a difference, right? And that's why I like Twitter. Cause it's a, it's a like-minded community of people that are trying to like build financial freedom. And like, that's cool. 
I just I don't know if I want to dilute that with Instagram audience. All threads has to do is take some extra from Twitter or have people spend additional time on social media. I don't think it necessarily takes away time from IG. Well, that's also a good point as well. The thing about Meta is, bro, they literally just have to take a little bit of users from Twitter because Twitter is struggling. And then boom, Twitter is not in a good situation anymore financially. I mean, imagine they take 10, 15 million people off Twitter completely. That's going to be hard to do, but imagine they do it. If this is a very sort of simple thing Zux has to do. It's a very a fine-tuned type of execution he has to have in terms of building the product. But it's a simple strategy in terms of getting people off the platform and getting them on a new platform. It's just, can he execute and do that? And if he can, this is going to be a little bit tougher for Elon. Granted, I don't think he's going to succeed long term on that in a massive way, even if Threads is a success. So I think Elon will be fine. Um, but I guess we'll see how it goes from there. E Elon kind of turning Twitter into 4chan light. And you know what, JR? I, I can't disagree with that. There is a little bit of raunchy content on Twitter that kind of comes up sometimes and you're like what is this and that's because they embrace freedom of speech so the question becomes do we care more as a population of freedom of speech or do we care uh about you know letting meta dictate what people can say or can't say and giving them the market share based on that premise i mean i personally am turning into a free speech absolutist i care a lot about that um so but, but it's also like the stuff i'm going to talk about on meta is not going to be so unique that it deserves to get censored right because we're talking about stocks at the end of the day so it's 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 a dicey game. I mean, there's a certain segment of the population that's never going to leave Twitter because of freedom of speech, and there's a certain pop set of the population that doesn't care. And so I guess we'll see. Seems better for Twitter. Getting new people to posting thoughts on another platform might bring more users to Twitter. That's a good point, T TPL. That's actually a good point. I mean, if you normalize the behavior, which Twitter has never been able to do because they didn't have 3 billion people to advertise a text-based product to. I mean, that's 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 another reason why Twitter never took off, right? If you normalize the behavior of constantly saying thoughts all day, um, then maybe people go to the better product, which ends up being Twitter because they've already normalized the behavior and they leave threads. That could be, that could be an argument as well. What's 4chan? It's basically like underground Reddit. And there's like a lot of bad stuff you can do. I don't spend time on the platform, but I have a friend who uh, who got hooked onto 4chan, 4, 4chan. And basically, you can see some pretty bad things. I mean, let's just say you can find anything you want and people will be posting it. And it's not... So I, I don't use it, but my friend he used to tell me every day, he's like, yo, I saw this. And I'm just like, bro, why are you like watching this? He's like, I just can't stop. I never got into it, thankfully, but it is uh, it is it is like that. Don't go on 4chan at work. Yes, don't do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I, what, the 442 people are at least like, what, 80% of you guys have visited 4chan at least once. It is. A, let's look at their traffic right now. Let's go to their traffic. So there's a website called Similar Web. I really like using it to help you see what a, it's not the, it's not always accurate, but I mean, it's decently accurate to figure out. 4chan.org. It's an organization. It's not a website. 50 million hits a month. 50 million hits a month. In comparison, let's go to Reddit. Reddit is 1.7 billion hits a month. Well, that's crazy. When you have this much traffic, 1.7 billion. And then that's nothing compared to the grand granddad of them all, the platform we're using right now, YouTube, 32 billion, bro. I saw I saw uh, uh, something yesterday that YouTube and Google account for like the most traffic on the internet. Like one out of every something page visits are Google or YouTube. It's just insane. 32 billion. And then you got the top dog, Mr. Google, at 84 billion. Which is actually down from May to June. May was 88 billion. So June is 40, 84 billion. But that's a lot of traffic, bro. That's a lot of traffic. Only Chan I know is Jackie. That's what I'm talking about, ET. Exactly. Uh, Ricardo, hello. Welcome. Is there a website you guys want me to put in the chat and show you the traffic? Let's go to Facebook right now, and then we'll do Twitter after. Facebook does $16 billion a month. $16 billion hits. Twitter's at 7, I think. 6.9, 6.8, 6.5. Oh, 6.5 billion times people visit Twitter. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Can you check Pouncer? Oh, yeah, let's check Pouncer. The new new number should be up. I'm going to imagine 580,000. That's my guess. Wow, 502. Okay, I was a little bit off. Oh, wow. May. Oh, I must have remembered May's number. May was 580. 
502. All right, so traffic went down a little bit. Uh, 500,000 visits to their website. Let's go to Snowflake. What was Snowflake? Snowflake. Snowflake is 4.3 million. Okay, so they, <laughs> yeah, they, we got some work to do, right? Uh, obviously, Snowflake has a lot more clients, a lot more attention. Th but this 4.3 million versus 508,000 just means they're doing a better job in marketing. They're getting more people to click on their on their website, click on, listen to their brand. I mean, yeah, I mean, Palantir should be able to get a million people coming to the Palantir website every day. Now, granted, Palantir doesn't run like Facebook ads. Snowflake might do that, so they might be getting some clicks off that. But 100% Palantir should be able to up their traffic. So Snowflake absolutely killing it with the right traffic. Um, let's do Netflix. That's our last one. Netflix at 440 bucks. Netflix is, you know, the consolidation of Netflix into streaming has just been absolutely phenomenal. No one's been able to kill them. Not HBO, not Paramount, none of them. 1.4 billion on Netflix. Pretty stable. All right. Well, it's a red day, folks. I wouldn't do a ton of buying. Uh, I would, I would, I would, I would maybe nibble it. You'll see over the next couple of days how bad the red lasts, or at least tomorrow on a Friday. Friday, we should get an even more of a sell-off for the weekend, so we'll see what goes from there. That's it for me. We've got some more Pound videos coming up. I'm not doing the hub, not doing it, not getting demonetized. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you guys can do it yourself, though. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of visits. Um, and we'll have Finance Junkies on tonight, and we'll keep going from there. That's it. Thank you all. 440 people for joining. It means the world to me. It's the greatest thing to do in the morning to start the morning like this. Have a great, great Thursday, almost near the end of the week, and I'll see you guys later tonight. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.